Welcome back, my fantastic friends. This is the Master Paints the Masters, where we take a past master's piece of work and we recreate it using my own techniques and methods. And this week, we're looking at Salvador Dali. Okay, let's have a look at one of his pieces of work. Now, this is it. This is the beautiful the Lighthouse at Alexandria. Okay, now take some prep, so here we go. On some masking tape, I've drawn out the lighthouse. On a canvas, I've painted it in crimson paint, cut out the masking tape lighthouse, stuck it on the, uh, the canvas, and then completed it all in, uh, in gessos and allowed it to dry completely. And all, on top of that gesso, once it's all dry, I've coated it in different colours, greens, crimsons, blues, and a tiny bit of liquid clear. So it's all set, it's slick, it's ready to go. So we're just hitting where the lighthouse part will be with a bit of titanium white. Now, of course, you may notice I've speeded up the video as we go along, just to ease us into the viewing applications. It's something that we've seen many times before. And then, of course, during the course of the video, we'll be talking a little bit about Dali. All right, so with that white paint, just painted all over the canvas in the sky area. We're just gonna fluff it up gently, nice and gently, easy peasy with a little dry brush as well. We'll just, just bring all that together. Now, somebody suggested, Dali, I think there was on uh, on Instagram, I think it was, or maybe Facebook, but next week I've got an absolute belter that I'm, I'm really happy at doing, and that came from a comment from uh, from you guys on, on YouTube. So I'm really pleased that we're going to be doing this artist next week. Well, let's get back onto Dali and his painting. Now, in the sky, we can see quite clearly there's... Um, going to be a really big menacing cloud so we're just taking a little round brush bit of titanium white paint and we're just rolling it around where these clouds will be just like that and every now and again we might wipe the brush on a paper towel then we'll fetch it all together with a, with a clean dry brush just blend out the back edge of that cloud just like that no no pressure at all just very gently tickling this very lightly now we both before we get going too deep into this painting i've just got to mention that i've been doing a couple of guest appearances with a couple of other coin collectors uh, on christopher collects's channel christopher collects if any of my artistic friends don't know about him he's the he's the coin guy and he's the guy that inspiration uh, to, to lots of lots of coin collectors in in, in Britain, and uh, certainly me got me into coin collecting. So um, we've been doing uh, like a Taskmaster sort of group of events, and it's been a real laugh. I was partnered up with Absolute Coins. He's another great coin collector, and we have to create paintings and pictures to uh, to represent little you know little coins and it, oh, amazing laugh so go check those out if you haven't done so already and yeah you, you'll see how much fun we had on the video it really was a, a lot a lot of fun now think back to last week we painted Henry Moore and I really enjoyed that painting and if you haven't seen it I'll put a link up in the top corner it was a fantastic painting really really enjoyed doing that one now the similarities to, to Dali and Henry Moore is that I was born within their lifetime because uh, Salvador Dali, he was born in, uh, in May 1904 and he passed away uh, on the 23rd of January 1989 making him 84 years old. I would have been nine back then, way back then. Now Dali, he was born in Spain, Catalonia in Spain um, obviously, like I've said, way back on May the 11th, 1904. And he's best known for his surrealism and his completely bizarre, bonkers paintings and, and images in his works, which are instantly recognisable. Now, what drew me to the lighthouse at Alexandria was the fact that, yes, it's a Dali. You can tell from the original that we put up the beginning of the... Uh, the video it's definitely a dali but it, it doesn't have all the surrealism that a lot of his work has and I, I could relate to that a little bit more i have been asked many times in the past to to paint lighthouses and, and windmills and i have done in the past before youtube and when the dali suggestion got mentioned i did a bit of research 
and the lighthouse came up and boom i fell in love with the moody skies and the 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 presence of the beacon of light in the sky it was fantastic now doing a bit of research obviously there's there's some drawings out there that Daly did before submitting his final piece and on those drawings the, the they changed somewhat from the from from the end product, which you would get, you know, you would get. But delving back further, I mean, many artists have covered this subject. Many artists have covered the, this subject, and uh, the fact is that I don't think anyone really knows what the lighthouse at Alexandria really looks like. It's it's lost in mythology and folklore. Now, some sketches and and paintings I found on while doing research were of a, a round lighthouse, some of an octagonal lighthouse, and some of a of a squarish looking lighthouse. Whatever shape it truly was, who knows, but uh, it was definitely uh, a marvel of architectural creation. It really was, it was a triumph. Uh, it was built round about 280 BC, I believe and uh, it would have stood something in the region of 350 feet tall which is which is you know the only thing bigger at that time would have been the pyramids in giza and furthermore some descriptions report that the lighthouse was uh, surmounted by a, a huge statue of either alexander the great or or the sun god helios but who knows? No, you know. Now, we're just carrying on with the painting now, just carrying on with the sky. And that's one of the things that drew me to the original Dali painting, the sky. It was a moody sky, full of chaos and, and anger. And it, it just looked really menacing, but really enchanting at the same time. And I'm going backwards and forwards with different colours and different brushes just to create all these wonderful effects if you look here this is a, a little bit of black and crimson mixed together on a tiny little flat brush and i'm just putting in some wispy little little clouds some angry little clouds that are just just flying and floating between these big fluffy big fluffy menacing clouds and you can get all these variants of colors if you coat the canvas first like you like you witnessed um, at the beginning of the video you take a black canvas and you just coat it with different colours, transparent colours basically, which are, which if you're applying to a canvas, they still look pretty much dark or black, and that's a transparent colour. If you went over it with white, that's an opaque colour, and, and and that's not what we're after. So so the crimsons and some of the blues and the greens, they're, um, they're transparent. And what you can see I'm doing, I'm just flicking out some little rays from the uh, from the lighthouse, just with a tiny little round brush. And then somewhere up here there was a fire that used to burn in the lighthouse. Going back to the lighthouse, they used to burn uh, like wooden fires at the top. And that was their way of, of, of creating a, 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 a light effect, basically. They didn't have big bulbs like, like they have in... Uh, the big old lighthouse at, uh, at Flamborough, up here in Yorkshire. So we're just adding a little bit of reds and oranges and, and then yellows just to create a nice little flame effect coming, coming from within that lighthouse. We'll come back obviously and, and paint the lighthouse once we've removed the tape. Now, going back to Salvador Dali. He received his formal education in the fine arts uh, from Madrid in, art school in Madrid. He was influenced by the Impressionists and the Renaissance masters from an early age. Now what we're going to paint up here, like we've discussed before, is the statue of Alexander the Great or the Sun God. And in Dali's painting we believe it's gold. Now I haven't got gold paint so what I, I'm using is just a, a, a brownie orangey colour mixed with the, the ochres and a tiny bit of cad yellow and we're just gently going to put in what would look like a faraway statue 
of Alexander the Great, or the sun god, Helios. Now there's a bit of headland back here, so we'll tap a little bit of a, a headland in, just on the fan brush. Just there. Then we can build the sea around that, can't we? Now during his early years, he became, Dali became attracted to cubism and the avant-garde movements and eventually it moved closer and closer to surrealism during the uh, the early 30s the, the late 20s early 30s when he joined a surrealist group in 1929 and he soon became one of its leading exponents and it was around this time that Dali painted one of his most famous paintings his best well-known piece of work the the Persistence of Memory, which is an absolute fantastic piece of artwork. If you haven't seen it, I urge you to go and have a look, look on, on that one. Now back to the painting, you can see I'm painting in the sea now, and all I'm doing is, is taking some titanium white on a, on a big brush. This is a one and a half inch paint brush, and I'm just pulling that straight down where the horizon would be. I'm just eyeing this up. I'm not putting any masking tape on and... and uh, and seeing where to give us a straight line, we're just going to do it by hand. And I, obviously. And we just pull down, and we'll pull down some in the front here where the uh, the masking tape is. That's going to, when we pull it off, it's going to look like the uh, a lighthouse. Or should do if all goes to plan. So we pull straight down, and we gently went across. And now we're coming back. This is another different way of doing a C. We're just coming in and we're cutting in. Instead of cutting in a water line like we would usually do, we're just going to cut in some, some dark shadow parts of the waves of the sea. This is just ultramarine, right on the very edge of the knife. I haven't even thinned it down anymore. It's not like liquid white or anything like that. I've just taken ultramarine, smashed it out on the palette and just cut across and, and got myself a little cut of of paint and we're just putting in some dark parts of the waves just like so and it doesn't matter if they're not perfectly flat because the sea will be swooshing about and waving about as it usually does and we're going to vary the colours somewhat so where we started off at the back near the horizon that was ultramarine we're going to change it to to the purples as we get closer. We want a lot of colour in this. A lot of colour. Now we're going to press on a little bit harder with that uh, with that paint. We can take white. Looks like we've got a little bit of yellow there as well. And that's fine. That's fine. That'll give us another little tiny bit of colour in there. And then we'll come back, cut in some more. And again. Now I'm not killing all the dark area and I'm not killing all the light areas. And I probably hear me say this time and time again. All our work is is just playing tricks of, of light against dark, colour against colour. And if you have a lot of dark on the canvas, it doesn't look right. And if you have a lot of light on the canvas, it doesn't look right as well. So you want a nice happy medium of them both. Now with a tiny little fan brush, this is one of the smallest ones I've got, but I find it useful for painting little waves. I'm just going to grab that back edge and I'm just going to take it towards the next wave. I'm just going to take it back, just like that. Very gently. Great thing about art is that each one of these pictures, if I painted it, Time and time, if I did hundreds of these paintings, the exact same thing, they would all be slightly different and unique. They'd all have the individualities. Now, during the Spanish Civil War of, of the uh, mid to late 30s, uh, I think it was 1936 to 1939, um, Dali moved to France and he lived there before moving over to the USA in the 40s, the 1940, 
where he achieved uh, a lot of commercial success. In 1948, Dali returned back to Spain, where he renounced to the Catholic faith and he developed his nuclear mysticism style. Now, Dali uh, wasn't just well known for his surreal, bizarre paintings, but he, he also he also did a lot of other kinds of artwork, including graphic arts and film. He, uh, he also did sculpture, design, and occasionally he did photographs as well. He took photographs. And at many times, he, he collaborated with, with other artists. He even wrote poetry and, and, and fictional books. So a very talented, very talented man. Now, as you're just watching me tinker with the waves now, um, you're just going backwards and forwards, putting water lines in, increasing the waves, making the sea look kind of surreal because that was the major theme to, to uh, the majority of, of Dali's work. So this is my little nod to him trying to make the sea look a little bit surreal because a lot of his a lot of his work included the dream world and the subconsciousness and they also included other other aspects of, you know like like sexuality and religion sometimes and, and scientific things he liked to push the boundaries to be honest and uh, he did have an eccentric um, you know be it pattern of behaviors really at times you've only got to have a look at at his mustache that was a that's a cracking mustache that he used to have now with a palette knife we're just gonna try try his best to to get off the masking tape that will expose expose the lighthouse now just pull it up now you're not gonna hurt the canvas you aren't you aren't certainly gonna put a hole in it you're gentle enough and we'll just rip off the masking tape it's been painted over the masking tapes with the uh, with the gesso so it's going to be a little bit tricky to get off but we can do that and underneath that is the crimson the crimson paint beneath now this will give us nice straight edges to work with you don't want a wonky uh, you don't want a wonky lighthouse now, do we? It look like it'll fall over. Yep, just just remove the masking tape. There we go. And it's it's a little bit tricky because you don't want to ruin the paintwork that you've already put down. And you really don't want to wait for the paint to dry, you know, before you start putting your next coat on there. Because it it will be it be really difficult to get off if you do that. Not impossible, but quite difficult. Now there we have it. We've got his lighthouse or his undercoat of his lighthouse. So now we can come back and we can start putting overcoats in there of the oil colours of the oil paint. So we'll start off up here, right at the top of the lighthouse. We'll put the fire back in there, right there. This is the furthest thing away in the lighthouse. Obviously, it's in the middle, and we're going to see the face or the faces of the lighthouse. So we'll we'll pop that in there. It's just cadmium yellow and a bit of a bit of the more opaque white. And then we can re-tinker with this flame up here. Now going back to the lighthouse. So although it was built in 280 BC, it didn't find its way into any list of, of the wonders until the 6th century uh, AD. Now, here's one for you folks. Who can name the seven wonders of the ancient world? Put them down in the comments if you can if you can name me one or two or all seven. I've 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 given you two today on this painting if uh, if you listened out correctly. So, see if you can name a couple more. Leave a leave a comment for me. Going back to the research, I think the lighthouse was still around in the 12th century. It was still standing then, and but by the by the 1470s, I think a uh, a sultan was able to build a fort from its ruins, which is a shame. Okay, let's let's talk a little bit more about Dali since it's a painting dedicated to him. Dali had an elder brother 
who was um, also called Salvador, but uh, unfortunately he passed away at the age of nine months of gastroenteritis a year before Dali was born. Now Dali's dad, also called Salvador, was a middle class lawyer and an anti-clerical atheist and he was also a Catalan federalist whose strict disciplinary approach to life was tempered by his wife Felipe and it was Dali's mother who encouraged her son to have an artistic uh, nature and set him out on his artistic endeavours. Dali later said in, 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 in a report that he loved everything that was gilded and excessive and he had a passion for luxury and, and the love of oriental clothing. He even claimed that he had Arab lineage, claiming that uh, his ancestors were distant Moors. Now back to the lighthouse, you can see I'm just blocking in some, some deep red colours into, uh, into the lighthouse here. And I use the, use the palette knife on the main body of the lighthouse and I'm using a little flat brush now just on these walls here. We're just going to block in some colour. Now, according to research, the lighthouse was, was kind of a reddy colour. So that's why we undercoated it with the crimson and we're going over the top with with the browns and it's a, it's a reddy brown. Basically, this, this brown is uh, it's been made up with Van Dyke brown, but I've added a, a lot of crimson into that as well to give this lovely deep, deep red colour. And you can add a bit of bit of the sap green into there as well, and that will that will give a, a, another variant of colour as we're painting. Yeah, just like that. We're sticking to the guidelines that uh, that we had down as the masking tape. And there's some little horns here. They look like little little devil horns. Yeah, the thing is red and it's got fire and it's got a really moody sky. Amazing. And we'll just just play with colour a little bit. We'll add some darker colours, some blacks as we go along, just like so. We're coming in with a knife and we'll just scratch in some brickwork, just like that. There we go. There we go. Okay, so so Salvador Dali, as we've discussed, had a had a brother who died before he was born, and this this sort of like plagued on on Dali's mind throughout his life, mythologizing him in his writings and works of art. And Dali, this is as we quote Dali, said of him, "We represent each other like two drops of water, but we had different reflections." He was probably the first version of myself, this is Dali, remember, but convinced too much in the absolute. Images of Dali's brother Wood would reappear in his later works, including the portrait of my dead brother from 1963. Dali also had a sister, Anna Marie, who was three years younger. In 1949, she published a book about her brother, titled Dali as seen by his sister now what you can see me doing there with a the little fan brush that I've just had out I've just gently caressed the lighthouse which brings everything together just very gently caressing it I'm going back in I'm just scraping in some brickwork you can hardly tell it's there but these finer things these need to be done these need to be done there just just lightly touching when you get up close to this this painting you can tell it's there it's, it's no good leaving them out in 1922 he uh, dally began uh, that would become what would become a lifelong friendship with the the prado museum which uh, he felt was the the best the, the, the 
very best museum of old paintings in the world. And each uh, each Sunday morning, Dali went to the the Prado Museum to study the works of the great masters. And this was like a, the start of a monk-like period for for Dali. He was devoted uh, completely to the to the Prado, where where he went with a pencil in hand piece of paper and he analysed all the great masterpieces. Now he was a very talented artist in many in many respects was Dali but uh, when he started to experiment with cubism this earned him uh, the most attention from, from his fellow students since there were no cubist artists in, in Madrid at the time. In one of Dali's earlier works, a watercolour called Night Walking Dreams from the 1920s, it shows a strong futurist and cubist influence. Now on the original painting there was little gold statues on top of these little uh, castellations up here. So we're just going to put some in the same way. Now that reminds me folks, I do have a, a, a Etsy shop. If anyone's interested, Master Temple Arts, you can uh, you can treat yourself to a, a nice piece of, of original oil painting by myself um, that's found on Etsy, if you if you so wish. A little bit of a self plug there, why not? Now I think these statues on the edge of the, the you know the the curtain wall of the the lighthouse, I believe they are other. Um, gods from mythology and with the fan brush with a bit of white paint on uh, plenty of white paint to be honest we're just going to put some splashes of waves right down at the base of this lighthouse just set it back into the painting just like that now Dali had many many exhibitions throughout his his career and uh, and he met many many talented talented artists and he also met Met up in 1926 uh, in Paris. He met up with Pablo Picasso. Now I would have paid good money to be a fly on the wall when those two got their heads together. I bet they had such a an amazing, surreal experience. I bet over the many years, um, Dali suffered from ill health, and towards the end of his life, he developed a, a depression and a, a severe tremor in his arms especially his painting arm and in May 1983 what is said to be Dali's last painting The Swallow's Tale there's been some discussion whether he could have done such a precise beautiful painting given the the effect of the tremor in his painting arm in 1984 Dali's depression worsened and he, he refused to eat food leading to severe undernourishment. Dali had previously stated it was his intention to put himself into a state of suspended animation as he'd read somewhere that microorganisms could do that. There was also allegations that Dali was forced to sign blank canvases by his guardians that could uh, later be used as forgeries. And it's also alleged that Dali knew he was selling blank, uh, blankly signed lithograph paper possibly producing over 50,000 such sheets from 1965 until his death. As a result, art dealers now tend to be a little bit cautious with the work attributed to Dali in this manner. Christmas time, 1988, and uh, Dali was in hospital, and he had a visitor, the King of Spain, who confessed had always been a Dali fan. Dali died the 23rd of January, 1989, from art failure. So what's a Dali painting worth? Some of Dali's genuine paintings have sold for millions, millions and millions. The maximum we can find is around about the 22.4 million. That is absolutely eye-watering for a modern 20th century artist. Well, what an artist. What an absolute artist he was. Okay, I think we're just finishing off this painting now. I think we're about ready for 
We're going to signature down here. We'll just tinker there. And we'll sign this one down in the bottom corner with thin red paint. Okay, so if you enjoyed this one, folks, please give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, give me a subscribe. It will mean the world to me. Now, let's have a look at both the paintings. So there we go. We've got Salvador Dali's on the left and mine on the right. How did you think we did, folks? Happy days. Until next time, take care. I'll see you all later.